Genesis 37, verse 14. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seat. We're dealing this year, kingdom authority. Kingdom authority will test and try you. You know, it sounds grandiose having that type of being, but what it actually does is say that, oh, really? You all want to be kingdom-minded people? Well, we're going to bring everything against you that is unlike the kingdom, and let's see how well you can stand. See, you, you don't know that going in. You get defeated going in. And that's when the enemy can have his way. But we want you to be aware. And so kingdom authority for the year. We are on the series now, Kingdom Pattern. Kingdom Pattern. And today we want to minister from the sermon topic, you follow kingdom orders. You follow kingdom orders. It must be up right there. Right there. Because right away, you feel like you're getting orders from a preacher. Oh, the pastor's trying to order me around. You missed it right there. Because it's the kingdom that's given the orders. I'm the first partaker. And then you, the people of God, follow. So everything that I say and speak to you, I have to partake of it first. If not, I'm not able to serve you. For as it were, as a king, especially back in ancient times, would have a cupbearer, someone to taste the food first before he partook of the food. Likewise, I must partake of the food that the king orders before I give it to you. And so today, we teach from the sermon topic again, you follow kingdom orders. With all of the drama that has occurred in this family thus far, and all of the drama that is to come, we cannot bypass the importance of vital lessons that are being taught in the very midst of it all. Sometimes in life, what catches our attention, our time and our heart, is all of the drama. Uh -huh. While really, in every bit of drama or family issues, at some point it is wise to step aside, take a look at it, take a look at the situation, and figure out why the situation even exists. I want to encourage the people to be a mature people. In other words, that you do not get emotionally wrapped up into situations so much that you don't understand the purpose of the situation. In my own life, I learned not to get overly emotional, and trust me, there are times I do, let me confess. I had an overly emotional one moment this week. And I said, man, I messed up my kingdom rule. But the enemy will take you there at times. And let me tell you, it has nothing to do with you folks and nothing to do with social media. So let's cut those two things up. <laughs> that will help you out right there. Because I know somebody like, mm, I know what that was. No, you don't. <laughs> No, 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 no. Those things are played to me, right? But it is so important to your pastor that when life gets emotional, she does not buy into the situation because emotions will change. What I thought I could not survive last week, in five years it'll be over and I'll be looking back at it. So no sense investing my life in a situation that's going to change. Mm -hmm. And so this account, as we look at it today, will encourage you to follow kingdom orders. The truth is that if you want kingdom results, you have to do things the kingdom way. God is a God of order. You cannot look at the galaxy, the stars, and creation in general and not know that order is the order of the day. Uh-huh. No, 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 I thought about this based on where Bermuda is located. I expect a certain order to each day. 
since our geographical location is 32, 18 north, 64, 47 west, I expect warm days, warm to sunny days. And I expect that I should never experience snow. As a matter of fact, I feel rather offended when the temperature drops below 60 degrees. That's out of order. And I personally think that's when we should have a snow day. Order speaks to the rightness of things, the consistency of things, the fact that order makes something or someone dependable. Lord have mercy. Who is your go-to person? Because they exhibit consistent order. Uh -huh. First Corinthians 14 and 33, it says this, talking about order. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the same. Yeah, the order in God's house is not confusion. That's why God will get rid of confused people. 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. That's order in God's house. 1 Peter 3 and 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husband that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of their wives. That's order in our house. 1 Corinthians 14 and 40, it says, let all things be done decently and in order. This is order in every house. Psalms 119 and verse 133 says, order my steps in thy word. And let not my iniquity have dominion over me. Lord have mercy. This must be our prayer. God, order my steps, order my decisions, my life in your words so that the words of iniquity or the words that run through my family, my family lineage, do not have rule over me. See, all right, see, how are you going to see this? The saints need to start talking again. I didn't say gospel. I said we need to start talking again. Because when we start talking and we order our words after God, God will then align our lives after the words that we speak. And the church has become very silent, and so society has gone out of Now when they hear uh -uh, a pastor speak the order of the Bible, they come against you like, like you're a criminal. When really all you're speaking is the order of the Bible. Let, let me assure you, family, friends, and foe. Fr let me say it again. Family, friends, and foe will come against you when you start talking kingdom order. The only way to restore order is to restore the words of God in a society. I, I dare say the only way to restore order in God's house is to have the saints of God hearing God's word and receiving God's word and living by God's word. So the enemy has to get you. He doesn't mind you hearing the word. What's the big deal about that? He does not mind you hearing the word. He does mind if you take that word and hide it in your heart so that you don't sin against him. And so God, listen, this is my statement. I want your rule to override my rule. God, I want your order to reorder my order to your order. In the text today, you will clearly see how different sons respond to the order of their father. <laughs> And the truth is that when children are out of order with regards to following the instructions of their father, this will result in disorder. Now I'm going to talk about again how children will experience disorder because they don't follow the rules of their father. Let's take it to another level before I begin. What happens to a society when the father is not even there to give the order? Trying to help somebody. It's going to be some struggle. Some will fly through it with ease. 
very minimal percentage. But many will go about looking for a voice, looking for a leader, looking for someone to tell them what to do because they're looking for father's orders. And so let's look at the text today as I deal with the following three points. Point number one, your job. Your job. Point number two, your jurisdiction. Your jurisdiction. And point number three, your jealousy. Your jealousy. So let's begin with the church. Number one, your jaw. Well, speaking of order and jaw, when you go to a restaurant, you expect to get what you order. <laughs> you know, you know, I mean medium well. Medium well is not medium rare. And it's not well done. Now, who, who am I usually? I'm usually with people that are like, don't worry about it. Don't. Probably, the, probably number one. I have to call them by numbers. Probably number one. Somebody. I'm like, no. No. I'm, I'm, I'm. But I go for medium when it comes to the food. I'm paying for trap sirloin steak, for a porterhouse steak. You know, with some of that fat sizzling right on it. I'm paying for that. And so I want it as I ordered it. And if it comes another way, I return to sender. And I reorder it. Let me mad. You want my 18% tip? And I'm, I'm like my daddy. I give him 20%. I don't mind tipping. But you better get my order right. Kind of mad now. Get my order right. Put the temperature thing in. Just get the order right. You have a professional restaurant. Hmm? You think God can look down on his church? and say, you're my professional place, get it right. You have your life ordered a certain way so that when the world looks in, they see a church that's well done, that's ordered after his word. It's what the world is looking for. Don't you be fooled. The world is craving for order. And so the importance of order, it is important every day. Therefore, it is not strange to desire or expect order. Yeah, I, I work towards order every week. When I get to Saturday, there's a certain order. You know I do. I'm going to end up right in my room, peace and quiet, nobody to bother me after I cleaned out every other room. Order, order, order. So let's look here. Joseph, our main biblical character of focus, was truly ordered himself. Joseph was ordered. His mother ordered him. One day she said this, Genesis 30 and 1, and when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. I can't get into that today. You all like that part when I get, was he the problem? He was having children with everyone else. But this is Rachel. Interesting. Rachel probably thought that God opened her womb for her. You just want to, oh, I got that earlier. Thank you. Here, here, catch this. Rachel was like, I decree and declare by this time, 10 months from now, God shall give me a child. You think your boss and God are wrong? You think by saying decree and declare that it's happening? No, 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 no. The only time we can decree and declare and it can be so is if God has already ordered that it is so. You can decree and declare out of your own heart, your own emotions, your own desires. What? And so Rachel here, she thinks that God opened up my room because I demanded it of God. Really? A little pause here, a little insight. And she said later on, add me another. And you know what God did when he added her another? She died. I took her life back. Don't you be ordering God? That's another story. I can't go into that one. Yet I am clear, church, I'm so clear, that God opened up her womb because he needed a Joseph to add to his people. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost catch this. If the church is a womb, 
then could it be that God permitted you to enter into this room called Shekinah Worship Center so that you can add to the world who you are for his kingdom? So you got to value yourself. You didn't just show up. Stop thinking that. You ain't just showing up here on a Sunday. You're not just coming here because now this was your choice. No, no, no. This is God's purpose. And so Joseph, Joseph was ordered by God because God knew he would need Joseph at this time. God needed a true Israelite with a heart of love. God, God needed a love child. He couldn't use Leah. God needed a love child. He couldn't use Bilha. God needed a love child. He couldn't use Zimpa. He had to use the one that Jacob truly adored. Ah, oh, the one that Jacob pined after. The one that laid in the midnight hour. He will wander over into Rachel's tent. That's the womb that he opened up. Because he wanted the product of that womb to exhibit such love. Hallelujah. That no matter what his brothers did, he still would love them. Sheba. Oh, I need a Joseph in here. I need somebody who understands that, that out of no matter what they do to me, no matter how they deal with me, I'm a Joseph to the kingdom. I'm going to love them anyway. I'm going to bring them back into the kingdom if need be. I'm going to embrace them. Because it's not about me, God. It's about your kingdom pattern. Your kingdom pattern. See, we got to elevate our thinking. Yeah, yeah. God needed Joseph. And Joseph will be God's perfect will. Here comes Johnny, come lately. Joseph, come lately. <laughs> Joseph, come lately. All the, come on, you got to see it. All these other brothers. Plenty of males to take dominion. Hey, I think Bermuda, I hear it, Holy Ghost. Bermuda needs a Joseph. Bermuda needs some Joseph. Yes, there's a lot of males around, but, but, but Pastor Seaman is stirring the atmosphere. I want to know who is the Joseph that is called to Bermuda, called to realign the man of Bermuda, called to call them into the order of kingdom authority. That's why the enemy is kicking up. Because he knows my heart that there must be some Josephs around Bermuda. Huh? That story of the elephant. All oh, the elephants out of control. Bring in those adult male elephants and pull them back to order. Ah, it's a Joseph type of atmosphere. I'm going to bring order to disorder. Talking about God's word. Surely a child between Jacob and his beloved Rachel would yield a son of significant love and importance, Joseph. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Joseph is a true love child. And so the text of today, verse 12, and his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. Now let's examine the job. <laughs> the order of the job, the job, boys. It is expected that the brothers will be working in Shechem. Shechem. I like saying like that, Shechem. Sounds like Sukkum. Shechem. Shechem. Sounds like you're speaking in tongues. Jacob, or Israel, expects, watch it, his flock to be fed in Shechem. In other words, there is a specific, oh, a specific plot of land where the father has ordered the job to be carried out. Mm -hmm. As it were, a building permit, or, or should I say here, a feeding permit has been given for Shechem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now we, we, we return to the meaning of Shechem, so we know by now it means back or shoulder. Back or shoulder. Over the hill. Where's the flock? They should be over the hill. Over the hill, around the corner. Shack them. Okay. All right. This is where the brothers should be. This is where the father has directed them to go. Are you starting to feel me, church? Verse 13. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. 
And he said unto him, here am I. In this verse, you hear Joseph receive the orders of his father, and you hear the speech of Joseph. Listen to the speech of Joseph. Listen. Listen. <laughs> I dealt with that. Oh, Lord, I dealt with that. Where am I going? Here I am. <laughs> well, here am I. <laughs> here am I. Don't miss it. I've missed it before. Don't miss it. Here am I. Okay, okay, wait a minute, hold on. One thing we know about Joseph, he's where he's supposed to be. Not only did he say, here am I, geographically. <laughs> this new one right here. He was saying, here am I, spiritually, emotionally. In relationship with you, Father, I'm here. Whatever you say to do, Father, I will do. It, it, will, it doesn't matter what anybody else is doing at this point, because I don't know what everybody else is doing, but singularly minded, here am I. That's how we should worship God every day. Huh? You're not in church around a whole bunch of people every day, but every day your life should be ordered. Here am I, God. How, how do you want me to do this? What's my instruction? What do you want me to check out? What do you want me to deal with? Whatever it is, because you're my father, it's not about what I want. What do you want, Daddy? I'm not all sick here. Huh? Can we go about every day, every challenge of the day, soak a season coming up, just thought I'd drop that in, and say, here am I, Daddy. What do you want me? Do you want me to be half? No, I'm sorry. Do you want me to be 95% naked in front of the community? No. I, I don't know. Where that came? Where that guess came, right? Here am I. Hmm? <laughs> Don't miss the hear my statement. The term indicates an obedient heart. <laughs> it indicates that a person is ready to do the will of their father. Remember later on, a little boy named Samuel would say this as he yielded his life to obey the voice of God, 1 Samuel 3 and 4, uh, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, here am I. Shame. Huh? Then, and, and, and let me take you to Isaiah 6 and 8. It reads, also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I stand? Whom shall I stand? And who will go for us? Then said I, here I am, send me. This is known as the commissioning of the prophet Isaiah. This is his beginning before he will become a great prophet. So before you can become whoever you're going to become in the kingdom, you've got to just be willing. You don't know what the instructions are. You don't know what the situation's going to be like. But you can say this with assurance. Go whatever it is, your will, here am I. Genesis 22 and 1, it reads, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Mm. This was God about to teach Abraham the greatest lesson of his life. Then in Exodus 3 and 4, it reads, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, I like that, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and Moses and said, Moses, I like saying it like that, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Huh? I mean, we, we, we know the end of the story now. We know all the plagues. We know all he went through. Do you think, hear me now, says Timmy, hear me. Do you think that when he said, here am I, that he had any inkling of what he would have to face? You know, if God, I hear you, Holy Ghost, if God had said, uh, Mo, Mo, Moses, Moses, I'm about to send all four, you will be hated. You will be rejected by your own people. You're going to experience effects of some plagues. They'll not come nigh your dwelling. But the more the plagues that they feel, the more they will hate you. How about that? Moses, Moses. Most of would have said, no, you're tripping. Go burn another bush. <laughs> and like, he would have said, go, like, go schedule somebody else for this drama. I got to leave my family, leave my wife, leave my sons. Go back to the place where they know I killed somebody. You see? So let's not take this statement lightly.
because many people stand before a church. Are you willing to do? Yes, I am. I will. I will. You're saying, here am I. So that was Moses before he went down to Egypt to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. That's all he knew. Moses, Moses, I'm sending you forth to tell Pharaoh, let my people go. You're like, yeah, man, that's cool. Let my people go. I can do that. He never knew what it would entail. Are you willing to go through some stuff in order to obey God's voice? Are you willing to even suffer a little while to know that you'll have the victory later on? Here are my statements are statements of commitment. They are statements of ultimate obedience. And this is who Joseph is. That in spite of his youthfulness, how about that? You think? In spite of his youthfulness, <laughs> He was committed to doing the job, doing whatever it was that his father Isaac, notice I switched up, Isaac gave for him to do. Verse 14, and he said to him, go I pray thee to uh, see whether it be well with thy brethren and well with the flock, and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. Now, the instructions of the father was go, Make sure your brothers are okay. Make sure the flock are okay. Then come back and let me know. That's the instruction. So Joseph leaves Hebron and heads towards Shechem. That's what daddy said. That's up Shechem. You know, nothing worse than somebody say, meet me up at, meet me up by, like, Asper Park, like right out where the bus terminal, bus stop is right out there. You go out there and you're like, well, where are they? Where are they? What? Nothing worse than sending somebody somewhere and they get there and they're not there. I have an issue right there. So here's Joseph. Joseph has his job description and Joseph heads out to fulfill the job description. Point number two, the jurisdiction. Jurisdiction. Three definitions I like here. Number one, it's Joseph, jurisdiction. Power. Authority, control. <laughs> I'm going to remind you because some of you are going to have forgotten so already. The jurisdiction is in Shechem. Power, authority, control, right at Shechem. Number two, the extent or range of judicial law enforcement or other authority. Right there, what the father spoke of. Shackle. Definition number three, the territory over which authority is exercised. Right over Shackle. Shackle. Church, what I need for you to see here is that order, proper order, has been established. The father has sent the older sons, to the jurisdiction of Shechem. This is the area of land where the sons have been given authority to work in. This is why Israel directs Joseph to Shechem. <laughs> this tells me that the father has, in essence, spoken blessings. Oh, yeah. Blessings over the land of Shechem. Maybe I can pause here and say this, that at times your blessed place will look barren. Let me sit down on that one. I just got that. At, at times your blessed place will look nothing like what it's supposed to. At times the appearance of your blessed place will speak a lie to what God said it should be. Here is what you've got to know. <laughs> that if God called it blessed, it's blessed no matter what you see. And you've got to hold on until your change comes. The Father has spoken territorial blessings over Shechem. Let's see what's going on. 15 through 17. Shechem, Shechem is the, Shechem. And a certain man found him, this would be Joseph now, found him, and behold, he was wandering in 
the field. I'm on all set. I think I said it in my notes, but I feel an unction to say it now. If you would stay in your place, people would be able to find you. Some people are lost because they've been trying to find you where you should be. And a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field, and the man asked him, saying, What seekest thou? What are you looking for? What are you looking for? And he said, I seek my brothers, my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. He is so, he's saying, Tell, I'm begging you, hey, look. <laughs> you got to see it. He's saying, listen, I'm, I'm, I need to know where these guys are. I can't return back to my father without having fulfilled the mission that he sent me to. That's why you're going to hear well done one day. Because inside of every one of us, he has already placed the mission. And he's expecting that when he calls you, that the mission is done. Mission complete. 17. And the man said, hey, look, man. Hey, bro, look. They are departed hence. For I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and followed them in Dothan. We're talking about kingdom order today. Joseph, Joseph. You wonder why Joseph's the chosen one? Because he knows how to obey. You, know, you wonder why your parents don't kick up to that particular child? Probably the one that's obeying. Of course, in the extra grays in the head, you know. And so Joseph obeys the father, yet he will discover, watch it now, that his older brothers have not honored their father and have disobeyed their father. That's what it's about. It's setting up. Why will God use him? Get the picture. Joseph is wandering about in the land looking for lost sheep and his brothers. Got it? This is why Joseph is a type of Jesus, Jesus Christ. For Jesus was sent into the world to seek and to save them which was lost. And so we've got to be a Joseph. Yes, they're lost. They're out of place. They're not where the father said they should be. But this does not mean I get to watch Joseph now. He never said, they ain't here. Oh, daddy, daddy, they aren't there. No, 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 no. There was a love and a compassion and about that, a desire to fill the order. I must find them to report on how they are doing and how the flock are doing. Sometimes we're going to have to go the extra mile, go to another place in order to locate the lost person and bring the report back to the father. Now, get this. The brothers don't think they're lost. I'm on old shit. The world don't think they're lost. I promise you, if I put up all black males are lost. That's the end of that. What kind of pastor are you? People are laughing already. They post this. What kind of woman of God are you? You can only speak negative. Nobody making any positive comments about the cornmeal muffins I put up, the fish cakes I put up, the comedies I put up, all the nice family pictures. No, all you post is negative. Because they're lost and they're wandering. And I'm still coming for you. I, I, I'm going to come for you. I don't care where you're going. You're not in Shechem. But I'm going to come and get you. Oh, yeah. Oh, I am. Don't get weary and well doing. I won't. The brothers don't think. They, they think they're brilliant. Oh, oh, you've got an idea. Nothing's happening where Daddy said it should be happening. So this is what we should do. The brothers think that they know where they are. They think they know where they are. Anytime you think you know where you are, but you're not doing what God said to do, you're, wherever you are, you're lost. Wherever you are, you're wandering. And that's why you can't, you're not consistent. Inconsistent people are not where God would have them to be. Because you're always trying to find yourself. Trying to find yourself. Trying to find myself. Find, find, find God. What you and I must understand is that no matter what you think about, 
where you are, that when you disobey God, you're indeed lost. <laughs> I don't care if you're at government house, government gate, government party, opposition government party. I, I don't care where you are. If you're outside of God's will, you're lost. The brothers, watch this, have left the jurisdiction. Oh, they've left the jurisdiction of blessing. The jurisdiction of the father speaking over that plot of land. The jurisdiction of the father saying, I have given you authority to, to feed the flock right here. And they go to Dothan. Dothan. <laughs> Dothan means two wells. Two owls. Two owls. Going from the place over the yonder across the way to the place of that, there's two owls. Two owls. Dothan, <laughs> back to last week. <laughs> Dothan is located in Palestine. Hmm. So, look, at least for a couple of brothers, it was their mother's father's land. <laughs> It was not their father's land. It was an enemy land, an enemy land, an enemy to the Israelites. Oh, be very careful when you go to the enemy's land in order to be blessed. My, my, my. My, my, my. It has two owls, naturally, two natural owls. But it also speaks to two spiritual owls. For these wells are located in places where the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not the only true and living God. When the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob becomes an option, you are in trouble. That's when you are you're, you're, you're got your two owls. Everybody wants two owls right now. I want to be able to be deep and do my thing on a Sunday, and then look, God, look, look, Monday through Saturday, I need to live my life the way I want to live it. My steps don't need to be ordered in holiness, in sanctification. Oh, don't be pulling me away from worldly things. I want to have the option every day. Well, then you're living according to Dothan, the spiritual well and the carnal well. And so the certain man told Joseph a certain thing. He said, they are departed hence. What a sad statement. They were here, but now they're going. I look at God's word and I understand every word means something. The Father sent messengers to find you where you should have been. But the Son came to find you and you were not here. You think that on Judgment Day, you think at, at the rapture, everybody's just going to waltz into heaven? God is replete in his word. His word is filled with example after example that if you don't make your choice to follow him, that you will not hear well done, you will be lost. Come on now, if we go, I think it's St. Luke 15, parable of the lost coin, the lost sheep, and, and, and the lost money, valuable item. Where God sends you, he wants to find you. They were here, but now they're gone. Uh, they used to be here, but now they are there. Uh, they used to stand for holiness, but now they have departed from here. They used to honor God, but they have departed. They used to attend church, but now they have departed. They used to be respected, uh, but now they have departed. When you disobey God, you just departed from that place, from the land where God had scheduled you to be. What good will become of brothers from another mother in a native land of their mother? None. None. No good. You cannot mix good and evil and expect that there will be no impact. You cannot have one male, I'll go back to it again, having multiple children by multiple women and think, well, when it's so and so's birthday, all the mothers will just come together. Well, they're better than me because it was me. I'm not coming to you. I'm not coming. I ain't going. You know, people expect me to be deep. Oh, yes, I'll just come and fellowship. No, I'm not. We have to pray 
that the children get along. I would want the children to get along, but I'm not going to look at her, because every time I look at her, I'm going to think he, she was with my man. It's going to be a fight every day. I will be on social media. They will be videotaping me. They'll be saying, that's that Maria Seaman, because I wouldn't be a pastor. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. You know that? <laughs> my youngest is just looking at me like, Jesus. But it's the truth. They ever have me on Snapchat because I just snap. <laughs> I'm here to tell you now. See, and, and let me tell you why God loves me. Because he, he knows I understand jealousy. I told you this mean. I'm going to remind you. Jealousy, true godly jealousy means I'm jealous over what belongs to me. I'm jealous over you because what you have doesn't belong to me. But what I have that belongs to me, you better believe I'm jealous. I'm going to guard it. You don't want to, mm -hmm. Thank God we can't carry guns. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You, you all be pick, you all be down front street. No guns, because our pastor should something out. No guns, no guns. I'd be like, give it to me. Give me the lesson. Give me it, give it. Smith and Wesson. Okay. Woo. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> this is what happened. I've made light of it because it's not my life. But the countless amount of children that are being harmed in their development because the father is nowhere. Nowhere. So this moves us on to, hey, look at my point three, the jealousy. Wow. We need not define that too much, do we? Listen, jealousy doesn't need a reminder that you're jealous. It's like automatic. I get you get battle with age, but it's automatic. Where you going? How long you gonna be? Where to? My husband's shaking his head right now. Right now. Right now. That's off of 32 years. What in the world? What in the world? But let me help you out. I have jurisdictional control over that man. I mean, he has jurisdictional control over me. You like the way I said that? You like the way I said that? Therefore, watch it now. I, he, I don't think he has a jealous bone in his body. However, <laughs> I do. And so therefore, I guard the property, uh, the man, the husband. <laughs> because not only according to the text, let me get back in the Bible. I don't want him wandering to Dothan. Jesus. I don't need foreign woman. Okay, you get it. Help me, Jesus. Get back in the word now. Jealousy. And so look, look, look. Now the brothers, the brothers, they are in the land of their maternal heritage. They will even the more be reminded, he's not one of us. He ain't one of us. No, because they've gotten emboldened now. We're in our mother's homeland, our grandfather's. We're not in your jurisdiction. We're in our own. Yeah, but you have no authority to be there. <laughs> now, point to note here is that, just making a mention because it's coming up, that the sons of Leah are here too. A thought to consider for next week. Just putting a little plug in for next week is how will this land impact them? We'll check that out next week. Okay. Verse 18. Okay, here it comes. Here it comes. Remember now, they're out of order. Verse 18. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. Come on now, you know the reason that they could see him. That coat. Look, 
This coat will make you a target. The coat will make you a target. The coat's so long, they want you to shut up, but the coat's long. <laughs> they want you to disappear, but the coat's long. Now, this is a natural coat. However, when you're coated with the anointing of God, you will speak forth. You will shine forth even when the people don't want it. I woke up. I got, I on, on Friday, at one point I wrote, I, 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 wrote, I publicly stated, I'm not going to comment anymore. You might, I ain't comment about nothing no more, no more, no more. By Saturday morning, I woke up and the anointing was on me. And so I made another comment. Because truly, I'm not my own. I've been brought with a price. And I must speak the word, the jurisdictional word that God has given me for such a time as this. They can see him because of the coat. They can see you because of the same coat. It's the coat of favor, the coat of the anointing, the coat of the Father's love, the coat of the Father's approval, the coat of the Father's investment. He had, an inv he had invested in Joseph like no other son. And they could see it. Didn't he have to be bright? Didn't have to be intelligent? Didn't have to be deep? They could see it. Can you see the rage? Joseph was far enough away that they had time to have a board meeting. A board meeting of the brothers who hated Joseph. <laughs> Ow! They conspired. It didn't say they mentioned or they said they conspired. It was a meeting. Let's look at the definition of the word conspire. It comes from the word nakal. It means deceiver, beguile, deal subtly, conspire, crafty. Well, they were up to tricks. Well, you know, they had, their father was Tricky Jacob. Right, okay, let me say this right. Need I remind you, here it is, <laughs> that their father was all of these things, all of these. If you look at the definition of conspire, Jacob was a deceiver. Jacob beguiled. Jacob was a subtle sight. He conspired. Jacob was crafty. So those brothers had the DNA of their father. So can you imagine, I mean, Jacob's one person. You got these, let's just put a number today. Eight brothers full of the father's DNA. Oh, they had enough plans. Enough plans. So this tells me that a parent can experience, watch this, a God change, and the children, especially if they are now adults, not experience the same change. Jacob changed. He's now Israel. Oh, all of his past deeds have been forgotten. You know, in the sea of God's forgetfulness, good enough. Praise God, my sins are gone. That, that's Jacob, now Israel. However, when these sons were born, conceived, and raised, he was Jacob. And they're carrying their father's spiritual DNA. They are in the land of strange gods, and they are talking in the way that Israel talked when he was a stranger to God. So they're in a strange land talking like Jacob. Talking just like Jacob. Verse 19. And they said one to another, Behold, the, this, this, <laughs> this. <laughs> Some of you can't take it, you know. This. That. Oh, yeah, I had that too. And you call yourself Yah. Self. <laughs> this dreamer cometh. You know what I like about that? The ETH, the English language. You can't beat the UK, our motherland, and, and, and the queen. God save the queen. Our uh, queen. Because she uses that English language, cometh. I like it in the Bible. It means that no matter what, he kept on coming. Huh? He kept on approaching. He never hesitated. He never stopped. He just kept on moving. They saw him coming. You, they saw the anointing coming, and they didn't want the anointing. They saw the answer coming, and they, they didn't want the answer because they hated who the answer was coming through. Come on, now. If a black male said everything on Facebook that I said this week, he'd be like, that's a leader. Yes, man, bring those men together. Call them out and then call them like soldiers. But because a female said, mm, you think I'm going to stop saying it? 
Because I do believe in the authority of men. And we cannot be deceived. Sometimes they're out of chicken. And they're in dolphin. And I'm going to go find them in dolphin. And I'm going to bring them back to chicken. And so, please note that they call him, you're going to love this, they call him by his gifting. Dreamer. Then say, here comes that Joey. Here comes that Joseph. No, it's here comes that dreamer. Your enemies know your gift. <laughs> hey, your enemies know the gifting, the spiritual gifting that God has given you. Here comes that worshiper. Here comes her. She can't keep still. Here comes that talker. Here comes that preacher. Here comes that pastor. Yes. Oh, they can't, they can't, they can't say Pastor Maria. Say, pastor. I said, call it again, call it again. <laughs> so they call me that pastor or that preacher. This is, this is no sign of respect, you know. It is an indicator that your gift cuts. Your gift cuts against the grain of who they are. Yes. I would dare a real child of God to ever meet with me and discuss a post that I have. Because they'll discover I'm right in the word. So they'd rather not meet with me. I asked one person, you want to meet with me? They said no. I said, okay, goodbye, block, delete, unfriend. Oh, I've gotten used to that now. Because, again, I've got to know it's not about me personally. So I can't switch up. It's about the gift that God has given to me. And when you are a gifted child of God, the enemy has to recognize you because you just became a target. Well, why are you a target? Because, now nah, you've not got the blood of Jacob or the blood of Israel in you. You've got the blood of Jesus Christ on your life. And so you are marked as a blood covenant child of God. They identify him right, but they identify him with the wrong heart. They can call you right, but it'd be wrong. What they will now attack is what they called it. Ooh, this is going to be powerful. I need you. What they will now attack is what they called it. In their hearts and minds, there's dreams. Keep this Joseph talking. Yeah. So they must kill the dreams. Yeah. Leon's saying, we're going to kill our baby brother. Mm, sure about you. Oh, Lord Jesus. I, 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 I don't see this until I preach, you know it. Our black men killing our black men does say, I'm going to kill my cousin. I'm going to kill my neighbor's child. I'm going to kill that certain. Mm -mm. They say, I'm going to kill a member of the gang. Forty seconds. I know too many. I know that one. What's another game? I, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going what taking on park side? They don't look at the person. They don't say that's somebody's daddy. That's somebody's son. That's getting too personal. No, 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 no. We're not killing Joseph. We're killing the dreamer. They're not coming after you. You get it twisted. You get personal. Uh, they said that about me. No, it's not about you. It's about the gift in you that they want to kill. Some of you, as far as the devil is concerned, have survived too many decades and is still not going to stop trying to attack you. Your age don't matter because the gifting of God is ageless. If you're anointed to do something, you'll be anointed at age 10, and you'll be anointed at age 90. Same anointing. So they're coming after the anointing. So look, so they got to get rid of this Joseph talking. They gotta, so they must kill the dreams. You see how it makes them feel less attached to what they're about to do? Huh? 
So, oh, oh boy, this can be end up being hotter than I thought. So it's never, I'm going to kill somebody I used to be friends with. It's, I'm going to kill that pastor. I'm going to kill that leader. Oh, really? Okay, watch what. I've got some more teaching for you. Verse 20. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit, and we will say, some evil beast <laughs> hath devoured him, and we shall see what shall become of his. Three. Not him. No, we shall see what shall become of Joseph. Think what about Joseph? It's what you keep on speaking that we can't handle. So sometimes some of you are saying, and yes, you keep on saying it, I'm touching up God's anointing. They ain't worried about Maria seeing it. Don't worry about what I keep saying. This is helping me out. If nobody else is being encouraged because I'm getting this fresh, I, I'm feeling encouraged myself. Praise, praise the Lord. Huh? When I read this, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. God showed me something very important. I asked, wow, how can they kill the little brother? That's what I'm asking. I'm getting all, you know, drama, you know, you know what they call it, live TV, TV reality TV. I'm like, no, not the youngest brother, no. Not, not, he never hurt nobody. Why would they just? God told me, and this is the part here, that when people hate you, or are jealous of you, they really don't comprehend that they're killing you. Because they are focused on killing what makes you better than them. I didn't say I was better than them, but that's what they think I'm saying. Matter of fact, that's what they say. You think y'all better than them? <laughs> well, I'm had a lot of it this week. <laughs> huh? You think y'all better? No, 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 no. It's the gifting, the words that God has placed. You just want to be shut up. Just don't say it. Don't, don't talk it. Don't say it. You can think it. You can say it in your church, but don't bring it outside of the church. It's full wall. While I think, this is me, I think they are going to kill Joseph. They are thinking we are going to kill the dreams. Okay. I meant to ask for another pillar. It would have been dramatic. But, um, nope. Is this an old pillar? No? Somebody's going to go home and lie, lay on it? Are you sure? I'm going to buy you a new pillow. I'm going to buy you a new pillow because I saw it. I meant to actually get an old one. Right? Right? So. <laughs> I meant to. I meant to. But I can't. I can't. When God shows me something, you know I'm going to go, right? So in their minds, they are killing the dreamer who has the dreams. I ain't mentioned Joseph the killing the dreamer. So in other words, the only way to kill the dreamer is to stop him. Stop him from dreaming. Got to kill the pillar. I don't want him dreaming. I don't want him dreaming. I'm going to destroy him. I'm going to destroy him. Just kill the dream. Kill, kill him. Shut up. Don't talk anymore. Shut up. We don't want to hit. This is the passion. They they are not saying, Joseph, we're going to kill you. They're saying, we got to stop the dreamer. So they have disassociated themselves emotionally, and they're going to, in their mind, the dream. Not Joseph. The... Can you handle when you're a dreamer? Can you handle it when you are a dreamer? When, when your words cause others to want you to shut up. Can you understand also, I can't go into it, but next week, that God will preserve you anyway? That's what I saw. They will kill him, cast him, and then confess a lie about him. Ugh. Kill him, cast him, just like I cast the pillar. You're a thief. Come on, now. I know I'm talking to somebody. You ever felt like people just cast you aside? You mattered little to them? They didn't have value in you? Or they didn't like the fact that you're, oh, you're a Christian? In this day and time, you still think all that's necessary? Huh? That's when people, com they confess and they, they kill you, and they, con they, they cast you, and then they, 
they confess a lie about you. That's the pattern. Kill, cast, confess a lie. You, Amari, you're going to have to be able to, shaman no no say, to handle the, the killing, the casting, and the lie. Amano <laughs> say, why? Because their hatred is fueled by the father of lies who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. First Peter 5 and 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But let me say this, when God, hear me young people, when God has ordered your life to do a certain thing, or not just anything either, oh, it's a certain thing, it's a certain thing. There is nothing that the devil or the haters can do against you. Oh, that's the confidence. You just continue to resist the devil and he will flee. You obey your father. Go where, go where God tells you to go. Whether you're in Bermuda, your way in school, wherever you are, go where God told you to go, where he gave the jurisdictional authority over that place. You obey your father and watch God order blessings for you. I'm going to add this. My children will be a witness to this. The more the enemy comes after me, the more creative I become in cooking. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. It's like all of a sudden, it's like, let me create. I'm in the laboratory in my kitchen. I am convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that when God's hand is upon your life in a certain way, that when the enemy comes in to kill your dreams, that God will establish creativity is the order of the day in your life. I am convinced that he'll give you more creativity, that you'll understand his word more, that you'll love his presence more. Why? Because you're following the kingdom order. And that's what I want for you, Shekinah. That no matter what's going on, you say, I'm going to follow God's order. I'm going to do it God's way. Everybody stand into your feet.